Watch what happens this time when the counselor uses an empathic approach, listens to the student's responses, and encourages her to think through options that would benefit her. Hi, Laura. Thanks Hi. for coming in. Um, so I'm not sure how much you know already about sort of what you're doing here. If it's okay, I'll give you a, a little rundown. Yeah. So basically, we're here. I'm just going to talk to you for a little bit about sort of what your goals are for your life, um, get to know you a little bit better, and talk about some different behaviors that you might be engaging in. It's not my job at all to judge you or to try and change you. You know, Basically, I'm going to talk to you about how things are going, any changes you might want to make in your life, how I could help you with that, and just what I can do that's going to be most beneficial for you. Does that okay. sound okay? Yeah. All right, so I guess just to get started, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Laura. I'm 17 years old, and I'm a senior in high school. Okay. And what kinds of things do you have planned for your life? Well, hopefully go to college, get, you know, get enough grades to go to college. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Do you have a plan as to where you might want to go? or? Um, I'm not sure yet. Maybe a few schools in the area. I'm looking maybe to apply out of state. Oh, So right. maybe move away for college. Cool. Yeah. So kind of keeping your options open. Yeah, definitely. Really great. And do you have an idea about what you might want to study or? Yeah, maybe um, pre-law. Oh, wow. Okay. That's exciting. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, what do you like to do for fun? Well, um, on the weekends, I like to hang out with my friends, maybe go to like a party or go to the mall to shop. Or if there's like a school related event, we'll go to like a football game or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. You like to have a good time. Yeah. And you have a lot of friends or a few close people? or um, I would say like a modern amount. I'm not really, really popular or like I have no friends. So mm -hmm. I'm like normal. All right. Yeah. That's a good way to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, it sounds like in general, your things are going pretty well for you. How are your grades right now? Um, they're pretty good, A's and B's. So I'm doing okay. Okay, for college. great. Well, one thing I want to ask about is you know, different people have sort of different values or things that are important to them. They might, you know, be really close with family or really have, you know, their friends as being something particularly important. So I'm going to show you just a few things on this sheet and if you can look them over. So there's things like belonging, community, cultural identity, family, friendship, modesty, religion, respect, self-determination, and spirituality. Which of those do you think is sort of important to you? Um, family, definitely, uh, friendship, and belonging. Okay. Yeah. What's important to you about your family? Well, I, I love them, so I want them to think well of me, mm -hmm. and I want them to um, be accepting and love me. Okay. And you have brothers or sisters? Yeah, I have one sister. Okay, great. And how about friendship? Friendship, um, I've... I've grown close to many people that I care about, so I would like them to be accepting of me as well. Great. So being a good friend and yeah. having people who are good friends to you is important. And then what about belonging? You mentioned that one too. Yeah, just a sense of like fitting in and not and like feeling accepted in mm -hmm. general. Yeah. yeah. Not wanting to be part of a group. And yeah. Kind of. Okay. Great. All right. Well, one of the things I want to talk about is, you know. Um, you mentioned that you like to go out with friends and, and party and that sort of a thing. And I'm curious, when you're at the parties, do you ever have any alcohol? Um, not much. Maybe like one or two drinks at the most. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about how alcohol fits into your overall social scene? Um, I pretty much just have a drink. Just, just have it. Like, so it looks like I'm drinking even though I'm not. So mm -hmm. maybe people won't bug me about drinking or something. Okay, you're kind of getting pressure from other people who are drinking and it feels easier for you to kind yeah, of hold a drink. have one there and pretend to have it. Okay, yeah. and do you think that um, this is most weekends or occasionally? How often um, do you think that you are maybe around Maybe one alcohol? or two weekends a month okay. at the most, okay. not really much. So one or two weekends a month you're in a situation where there is alcohol. Yeah. Okay, and what sort of situations are you in? Well, just I guess at a party or something, someone's house, uh -huh. or even if it's not a party, like a small social gathering, maybe there'll be like a few beers around mm -hmm. or something. So mainly just kind of hanging out with friends? Pretty and... much, yeah. Are you ever um, places where there are parents around or, or um, mostly just, just with the kids? Mostly just with us, 
but sometimes I'll go to like a close friend's house and like I'm close to her family as well so we'll all just hang out mm -hmm. and what about driving um like drunk driving yeah or do you ever go anywhere in a car after you've had any alcohol um, definitely or? not I've never drunk driven and I've never been in a car with a drunk driver okay so that's something that you've sort of made a decision about yeah, it sounds like. Yeah, because I know that's extremely dangerous. Okay. So. What do you know about how that's dangerous? Um, well, alcohol definitely impairs your judgment. So, I mean, driving under the influence of alcohol can lead to like crashes and accidents yeah. and things like that. So I'd rather not be in that situation. So you're really trying to be safe and, and make sure that yeah. you're not putting yourself yeah, in those definitely. situations. That's great. You know, it's it's tough to do sometimes, and I really commend you for being able to, to stick with that. Thank you. So you mentioned you pretty much will, like, hold a drink or maybe have a drink or two. What do you think is the most alcohol you've ever had in, in one day? No more than two drinks. Okay. Definitely. So the, the absolute most yeah. was two. Okay. And what kinds of things do you like about alcohol? Um, I've never really been drunk, so uh -huh. I can't really say that I like that feeling or not. But it's just, I, I mean, you're just in a good mood. Mm -hmm. so. so it just kind of makes you feel relaxed? Or? Yeah, okay. yeah, relaxed. Okay. Uh, anything else? Um, no, not really. Like I said, I don't drink that much, so I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Okay. Else. And any not-so-good things about alcohol? Um, definitely, yeah. I mean, when I'm at parties and stuff and it's getting a little later, some people um, that drink like drank too much they start throwing up or they get hurt or they're really loud and obnoxious and that's not fun for mm -hmm. anybody so you've seen a lot of other kids who yeah. had some consequences yeah. and decided that's not for you yeah got it i, I can understand that <laughs> uh, any other things that you can think of um no i mean i've never you know been friends with anybody that's gotten into, like a serious accident and stuff it's just mm -hmm. very like obnoxious things yeah. so. okay well so you know, as someone who's not 21 yet, it is underage drinking is something that's not legal and it is something that is considered pretty risky. So I wonder what you think about that, just in terms of how it fits into your life. Um, I know it's definitely risky, but I mean, I guess we still do it. Uh huh. So it's kind of something that you're. It's just there. It's just there. Okay. And. I'm curious, you mentioned, you know, your friends are important to you and your family is important to you and sort of fitting in is important to you. And how does alcohol play a role with that? Um, well, definitely not in my family life because my parents don't really condone okay. alcohol use. But friendships, I mean, when I'm hanging out with my friends or we're at a party or something, there's usually alcohol involved. Okay. So from your family perspective, the drinking is not something that fits very well. Yeah. And with friends, you feel like it's easier to to hang out with alcohol, or maybe you wouldn't have as much fun, or I mean, your friends wouldn't like you as much. Or... I guess. I mean, since it's just there. Okay. So. Got it. Ties in with the whole belonging thing. Okay. Well, when you think about your drinking and sort of looking forward in five years or ten years, how do you think the drinking might fit in with your life? Um, it probably will have a very small role, if any. Mm -hmm. in my life considering I have big plans for my future. So. Okay. Can you expand on that a little bit more? What do you mean? I mean, I don't think I would be, you know, drinking as much or going to parties as much if I'm studying for school or in college or trying to get it off school, things like that. Okay. So the, the alcohol is something that might make it harder to reach your goals. Yeah, definitely. Um, so when you're sort of looking ahead, how often do you think you might be drinking, say, when you get to college? Um, maybe less than I am now. I mean, I don't drink much anyway, so mm -hmm. maybe like one drink every once in a blue moon. Okay. So you sort of have a plan to cut back on yeah, your drinking eventually. Sure. How might that go? Well, I mean, I guess right now I would try to stop in high school and once I get older, maybe just like socially once in a while, but not anything big or anything. Yeah, so you don't feel the need to make any major changes, but you feel like you could make some adjustments that Definitely. would make it yeah, easier. yeah, that's a good word. Okay, how important is it to you to make some adjustments to your drinking on a scale of one to 10, where one is not at all important, not something you're thinking about, and 10 is the most important thing? Maybe a five or six. And why'd you say five or six rather than like two or three? Because um, it's not something I 
do not care about at all, but it's not something that's just constantly on my mind that I want to change about myself. Okay. So it is something you have thought about. Yeah, it like. yeah definitely. Okay. And how confident are you that you could make a change if you decide you wanted to on that same scale? Um, I'm pretty confident that I can, considering that I'm not really an alcohol user, per mm-hmm. se. I'm not really into that whole scene, so it's, it's not going to be difficult for me. So what number do you think you'd say? Um, on a scale of 1 through 10, mm-hmm. if I can quit or not? Yeah. Maybe like an 8 or 9. Okay, and why do you say 8 or 9 rather than even like 5 or 6? Because, like I said, it's not a big part of my life, so okay. it's not really that difficult. Okay. All right. Well, kind of keeping that in mind, it sounds like um, you do have sort of a, a vague plan to make some adjustments in your drinking at some point. Yes. And it's moderately important to you. It's something you would like to do because you have these big goals for yourself, and you actually feel very confident that you could be successful with it. What sort of goal do you think might be good to set for today? Um, probably to stop. Maybe next party I go to not have a drink at all. Okay. Um, do you feel pretty confident that you could just stop completely? Yeah, I mean, I can just tell my friends. My, pre- my friends aren't really that pressuring. It's uh-huh. just like outside people that I don't really know that well. Okay. So I could just tell them, hey, I don't feel like having a drink today. M- what might be some benefits of following through with that goal? Um, Definitely I'll have like all my senses there and I'll be aware of everything that's going on. Uh Uh-huh. Anything else? Um, Health concerns, I guess. I know alcohol is bad for your health, Mm -hmm. so that would be one. Okay, so it sounds like you're actually pretty comfortable with setting a goal of not drinking anymore, at least at the next party and seeing how it goes? Yeah. Okay. Do you think it would be all right if we met again to kind of check in on how it goes and and see if it's working out for you? Yeah, that would be okay. All right, great. And then it it sounds like some of the benefits you're expecting are um, health benefits, having an easier time with achieving your academic and career goals, and just sort of not having to deal with some of the consequences that your peers deal with. Right. Okay. Well, very good. Um, Is there anything else that you think would be important for me to know? Um, how would you um, advise me to like get maybe my friends to stop drinking? Oh, that's a great question. So a lot of times kids who are trying to cut back, it's harder if their friends are still drinking. And one of the easiest things is trying to have more activities that don't involve alcohol. But of okay. course, yeah. that's harder if you're not the one planning. So some of the things that can be useful if you're at a party, say, um, and there's already alcohol there and there are other kids that maybe aren't your closest friends. Um, some of the things that I would recommend, since you're interested, are you know carrying around a different drink that looks like it has alcohol in it. So you know even carrying an empty beer bottle or beer can, or you know if people are having a mixed drink, just having the Coke say oh, okay. without any alcohol mixed into it. Um, often having anything in your hand is a good barrier for people who are trying to offer you alcohol because you already have something in your hand and it kind of prevents them from trying to stuff something else in there. Do you think any of those things might work for you? Yeah, for sure. Okay. What about in terms of talking to your friends about it? Have you thought about how you might approach with them or is that something else you'd like some tips about, about telling them about your plan to to stop drinking? I was just planning on telling them that Mm -hmm. I didn't really want to drink anymore. That wasn't me. Uh Uh-huh. So your friends would be pretty comfortable with that. Yeah, I mean, at least my closest friends for sure. Okay, great. Any other concerns or questions? Anything else Um, I can help with? No, I think I'm okay. Okay, so then, like I said, um, I'll I'll try and see if we can meet up maybe in a few weeks and see how it's going. And then um, if things are going great, then fantastic. And if you run into any stumbling blocks, then we can maybe problem solve together. Okay, great. Does that sound okay? Yeah. All right, thanks so much. No problem. This time, the counselor began with a structuring statement to set the agenda for the conversation, but conveyed an open and non-judgmental position while doing so. Using open-ended questions and reflections, she was able to build rapport with the student and set the stage for a productive conversation. The counselor also made effective use of a value sheet to learn more about Laura, gaining valuable information that could be used to develop discrepancy later in the discussion. She transitioned to asking about alcohol use with a non-judgmental open-ended question. This time, Laura felt comfortable opening up to the counselor about her experiences. 
The counselor encouraged Laura to share what she knows about the risks of underage drinking, which negated the need for any lecturing and provided an opportunity to affirm the student for her knowledge and good decisions. She used a staging ruler and looking forward strategies to elicit change talk from the student and used a summary to transition to the goal setting stage. By guiding the student to choose a goal for herself, the counselor continued to emphasize autonomy and demonstrate respect for the student. They discussed potential benefits of following through on the plan in order to solidify motivation, and the counselor provided Laura with the opportunity to ask additional questions before ending the session. Both are left feeling confident about a mutually agreeable plan that is likely to succeed.